What is up my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Cryo Lake and today we're going to be reading chapters 1 and 2 of Bat Moon Rising and Sanders Heads Fanfic by Becca911, book 5 in the series we've been reading. I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, yeah, I feel like the support the author, the link to the fic, and the author will be in the description below. If you'd like to recommend a fic, because we're about to finish this series, so if you want to hear any other fic for any other fandom, go ahead and pop it down in that Google form that I have in the description, too. Synopsis for this book is, They had not forgotten him. They had not let him go. He was still theirs. Any trigger warnings will be in the description. Chapter 1 they never managed to fix the gaping wound that Virgil had created when he'd abandoned them. It mocked them from every corner, haunted their snarls and whispers. Virgil had abandoned them, yes, but they would not forget him. He still had a place among them. He was still theirs. To see had been the first to step forward and interact with their host. Thomas, naive little Thomas, had become too fixated on the bright and good. He'd become too stuck on being such a lovely little saint. Thomas had made Virgil too lax, too unbothered. Thomas had made Virgil think he'd escaped them. Deceit didn't like being ignored and forgotten. He didn't like losing. He especially didn't like that Virgil's insolent actions, because despite the new color and the new friendships he'd formed, He'd been a dark side first. So Deceit donned a new persona of lovely little Patton and watched Virgil figure it out. Deceit smiled with Patton's mouth and he spoke with Patton's voice, but he looked with his own eyes. Virgil saw. Virgil knew. They had not forgotten him. They had not let him go. Virgil, buddy, he said with Patton's voice. I know you weren't too keen on it at first, but come on! Could you stand to lose the support of one of Thomas's friends? Virgil's eyes narrowed, and something on his face darkened. Playing this game was too easy. Well, yeah, Thomas's friend making me feel more at ease, Virgil said, voice low and angry. But Thomas lying would make me just as uneasy, and anyone who doesn't understand that should just shut up. Virgil, it's me. Aren't we friends? Double meanings. It was always about double meanings, and Virgil knew it. Deceit had won this round. And so he revealed himself. Thomas was so gullible, honestly. He'd planned to stick around longer just to wreak havoc, but... The real Patton had ruined it all, and he'd retreated. Still, he'd achieved victory. Virgil had remembered them, remembered his true heritage. He was theirs, always was, always will be. There was no escaping them. They would not abandon him like he abandoned them. When Deceit returned to them and he told them of his victory, they rejoiced. Virgil's Treachery had been festering inside them, and they were bitter and twisted. Virgil had betrayed them, had forsaken them to be with the light sides, and now Thomas was living a lie. Thomas was living as though he was a good person, an honest person, a person without faults. Virgil was helping him maintain that lifestyle. Virgil would eradicate his own kind. Virgil would come back to them. Deceit vowed it. And so he became forth once more, like a magnet. He drew Virgil out of... They were face to face once more. Deceit's mouth curved into a wicked grin. Let the games begin. Except this time, the game wasn't focused solely on Virgil. This time, Deceit's fury and bitterness was aimed at everybody. Thomas included, because... His host simply didn't understand the layers he had. Thus, despite Virgil fighting tooth and nail to get him to leave, Deceit stayed. It was all too easy. 
he argued with the silly little sides in the courtroom. He said, takes a liar to know a liar. Just to see Virgil get dangerously pale, and he amused himself with pushing all of them as much as he could. If he was already there, may as well break some hearts. I'd like to call my next stand to the witness. I'm sorry, I'd like to call my next witness to the stand, he said, adjusting his suit. Virgil, like the mature side he obviously was, Virgil blew a raspberry. Fine, does he could play dirty? Hmm. Very well, you don't usually have anything helpful to add anyway. Okay, Virgil snarled from the witness stand. Ask me your questions. Too easy. Deceit smirked, a predatory smirk, because Virgil was just too easy to mess with. He knew what Deceit would do to get back at him. He knew what Deceit would do if they couldn't get him back. You're in control of Thomas's fears, are you not? Oh my god, we all know each other. Who are these clarifications for? Virgil slammed his hand on the stand. Cut to the chase. Is it true that you once said that weddings are outdated, overly expensive pageantry? Yeah, well, I also once swore to Thomas that the drink he left alone in the other room for ten seconds was definitely poisoned, and if he drank it, he would die. I'm not exactly a beacon of truth. It was too easy to get him riled up, too easy to push the wrong buttons. Deceit welcomed the panicked anger and misdirected fear. Virgil was remembering. Virgil was worried. Virgil knew. He drawed. So, you've changed your mind then? And Virgil replied with, next question. Deceit chuckled. Come on, Virgil, play with me. Very well, as Thomas's anxiety, do you have any relevant information about the neurofrin levels in regards to these two conflicting commitments? As one of us, do you have anything to tell them? <laughs> Virgil's eyes got that little bit wilder. I think it's ridiculous that anyone is entertaining any of this. Guys, he's a liar. You literally know him as deceit. Glass, how is this Virgil? Deceit child. You yourself said that you are not a beacon of truth. Yeah, because I'm wrong a lot. Oh? So you've never been reluctant to share anything with the group then? Virgil's voice got dangerously low. Don't. Deceit smirk widened. Gotcha. What? He said innocently. I just meant your name. Don't. Maybe that's why it's so easy for you to recognize me for what I am. Come on, Virgil. You're one of us. Like I said before, it takes a liar to know a liar. Play the game, Virgil. Remember who you are. What you are. There was a steely glint in Virgil's eyes. Deceit wasn't bothered. Virgil was always defensive. Even when he was in his rightful place. Deceit knew. They knew. They could get him back. The second. Deceit didn't like to lose. That's why when he won in the courtroom but lost overall because his host was so naive, he disappeared fuming. Patton had beat him? Stupid naive little side. Not even his victory over Virgil could soothe the flaming eration that burned in his chest. It wasn't fair that he was disregarded and mocked because of his purpose, of his traits. Just because he was a dark side, Virgil was a dark side and they accepted and listened to him? There was a sour taste in his mouth when he gathered with the others. Fools, he'd hissed. The lot of them, prejudiced fools. I thought that perhaps you had more control than this. Another voice drawled, and Deceit glared at the Duke. Remus simply grinned wickedly. Do not, Deceit said lowly, accuse me of having no control. If I had no control, 
I would have dragged Virgil back to us kicking and screaming. As it is, I am playing this game that is going on far too long for my liking. There's a shift in the darkness as a form moved, a voice prowled. This is, this was your game, Deceit. It is nobody's fault but your own if you are losing it. Deceit barred his teeth, giving up on composure. To hell with his reputation when Virgil insisted on refusing them, refusing his family. They'd been the ones to accept him, to comfort him, to encourage him, and he dared to, to turn his back on them. Deceit refused to stand for it. No, Virgil would come to them. He would come back, even if Deceit had to alienate him from the others to force him to do so. Virgil thought he could ignore them, that he could defy them. Deceit would crush everybody that Virgil cared about, everybody just to prove that Virgil would never be free from them. He was theirs. He would crush Patton if he had to. He would make Virgil watch. Keep up the personal growth, Virgil. Who knows? Maybe one day you could be rid of us all. Someone mocked from the shadows. You seem to be trying hard, Deceit. Your games grow strained and boring. Perhaps, when the opportunity arises, another may present themselves to our host. Eventually, Virgil will crack and confess that he's one of us. Once he does, we will have him with us once more. Deceit did not like to lose, but he hated surrender even more. Waving the white flag was something he refused to do, especially when the matter was personal. And this was very personal. They'd been betrayed, been abandoned, and now they wanted him back. Send Remus, he said through gritted teeth. He'll be enough to disarm Thomas, and he'll divide the others. Besides, Roman is struggling to hold himself together. One visit from his brother dearest should be enough to break him. A chittering laugh scuttled through the dark around them. Deceit tensed slightly. They are weak, a voice rasped. They cannot stop us all. Virgil, be returned to us soon. Have no fear. Deceit straightened his clothes and squashed his flaming indignation and rage. I don't feel fear. You can bet your bottom dollar that I'll be able to crack them. The Duke says gleefully, even, even when he was with us, Virgil hated me most. Well, Deceit couldn't disagree there. The Duke had less grace about him. He was wild, unrestrained, vulgar, demented. He held no regard for sophistication, and so both Deceit and Virgil held a certain disdain for him. Listen, he said harshly. Thomas wishes to be more Thomas wishes to be more honest with himself, more direct with how he deals with dilemmas. He doesn't want to lie to himself about who he is. Exploit that, and you'll throw him off balance. The Duke cackled monotonically. <laughs> My dear snake, I'll be explicit. Well, if this didn't put enough pressure on Virgil, Deceit would just have to return with an army because Virgil would be coming back with them. None of them were fond of betrayers and deserters. Virgil would come back to them, or he would watch his friends be crushed one by one, and perhaps he might see what dearest little Patton was up to. If Deceit wanted a way into their little friend group, he might as well start burning bridges now. The Duke felt that he had less of a personal vendetta against Virgil, honestly. He wasn't offended by the abandonment, nor did he feel that Virgil was ignoring his history. He rather thought that Virgil was doing, well, to gloss over the fact that he had a history. Of course, Remus couldn't let him do that, but it was impressive nonetheless. 
He was, however, just as desperate as to seek to have Virgil back with them, in his rightful place. It hadn't been fair that he'd just been up and left like he had, that he'd been welcomed by the others so easily. Bunch of cheesy, useless do-gooders. They'd stolen Virgil from the dark sides. He had taken away and brainwashed him, and now Remus was going to take him back. If he failed, he would incur with Deceit's wrath. The others would murmur their disappointment, but it would be Deceit who would take action, and Remus would almost wary of the outburst that would happen. Deceit didn't share. Deceit didn't like to be discarded and abandoned. If he didn't give Virgil to admit to his past, God help everyone. In his personal opinion, though, he was starting to believe that they truly had lost Virgil to the light sides. He knew, personally, how alluring and good Roman could be. A prick. And how easy it was to give in to his boisterous positivity. Remus's lips curled nastily. He would bitter about Roman forever. How could someone so pretty and clean possibly be so welcomed and treasured? Virgil had left them for Roman. Now, Remus might believe that fighting for Virgil was a losing battle, but he had enough anger and bitterness and vindictiveness to destroy as much as he could. Virgil was one of them, one of the dark sides, and he would never forget it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really like this book and I am very happy with this series and that makes me very, very happy to be doing this series again because the first time I read this was, you know, three, four-ish years ago and I was a child, man. <laughs> I was pronouncing morality, morality with a T, like the death one, and now I'm like, ew, that's cringe. That, that mega cringe, if you ask me. Uh, if you'd like to support the author, those links will be in the description along with the link to the Google form where you can recommend future fix. There's also some of my links if you'd like to support those, like my TikTok, where I do Broadway things because I like theater, and a Discord server where you could Discord it up, and all of that stuff. Uh, yeah. So once again, thank you for watching, and much like Deceit trying to hold it together, <laughs> do your best!